Welcome back to another video. My name is Will and in this video I'm going to show you how to create animated GIFs using Premiere Pro CC. If you don't know what that is, a GIF is a file format that supports both animated and static images. An animated GIF is a short animated sequence of frames that you've probably seen a thousand times all over the internet. Typically, they are used on websites to add a little more interest than just a picture and they can help make your website, blog post, or even a social media profile stand out. Throughout this video, I'll talk a bit about what good settings are for making your image look the best and what to avoid doing when creating animated GIFs. So let's dive into Premiere Pro CC and get started. All right, so I'm in Premiere Pro CC right now and I have a clip that's loaded into a 1080p timeline. This clip was filmed by Teppo Hapoya when we went to British Columbia and this is a behind the scenes clip of me filming a waterfall. This clip is nine seconds long and that's what it looks like. So as I said, this clip is nine seconds long and for a GIF that's typically too long of a duration because that's a lot of information for one of these files. You can make them as long as you want, but I would suggest keeping them at only around three or four seconds. Because if you make them longer than just a few seconds, the file size will be a lot bigger. When you're embedding them into a website or blog post, it will take a lot longer for the viewer to load the page if the file size is too big. So the duration of your GIF is important. Okay, let's watch the clip and I'll pick the best three or four seconds. So I would say from about there and then that's fine, about four seconds. Before we export, I want to talk a bit about the frame size. So this is a 1920 by 1080 clip. So let's say we wanted to create a wider banner for a website where we wanted to use just this middle section. In that case, we would either export it in a really wide aspect ratio or we could set it up in the actual sequence. So for our sequence, let's set our frame size up to a bit more widescreen. And I'll show you an example of that. Let's set the frame size up to 480 pixels wide by 204 pixels tall. So with these frame sizes, the resolution will be a lot smaller and the aspect ratio will be a lot wider. Let's go to OK. It'll let us know that the frame will be cropped a bit and that's fine. From there, we will click on our clip and then scale it down. And we'll make sure that the left and right sides match to the edges. And essentially, this is the frame that we would have ended up with if we would have exported the clip with the 480 by 204. You'll see here that it's cutting off my feet, so the composition isn't too great. And this is why it's beneficial to do it in the sequence before you export, because this way we can scale it down and adjust the height to where we want it. This way my feet are in it and I've adjusted the composition to make it look a little better. Since we are talking about creating more of a banner, let's make this even wider. So let's set this to 102. And again, we'll adjust the frame height so the composition works a little better. And next, we'll set an in and an out point to export the video. We'll go to File, Export Media, and typically to export a regular video, I'd choose QuickTime or H.264 as the format. However, since we're exporting a GIF, let's go to Format and we'll change it to Animated GIF. And then down here in the video settings, you'll see that it's already selected the 480 by 102 because that references our sequence size. If we wanted to change that, we could, but since we don't want it to crop anymore, we'll just keep it as it is. We'll leave the quality at 100, and you'll see that the frame rate says 1, which of course we do not want because we want this to play as an actual animated GIF. If we chose 5 or 10, it would be very choppy, so I tend to set it to 12.5. That seems to give a good enough frame rate for what we're working with. Then for the field order, we want to leave it as progressive because if you set it to upper or lower, you might introduce some interlacing into your footage, and that's not a good look, so keep that as progressive. And then for the aspect ratio, we want to make sure that it's set up to square pixels 1. That means that each pixel in our frame is as high as it is wide. We'll choose render at maximum depth and then we'll choose use maximum render quality. Then we'll go to output name and we'll select the folder we want to export to. We'll give it a name and title it will bc animated. We'll hit save and then we will export. 
As you can see, we've created our GIF image and it's 2200 kilobytes. That's a little big for a GIF file, so if you wanted it shorter, we could chop a little bit off the end and reduce the duration of our clip by a couple seconds. But for us, this will be good enough. Now that we've done that, there's a free website called Giphy.com that you can use to upload your GIF. And then it'll give you an embed code or a share code. You can use either of these to embed it onto a website or blog post, or you can upload the actual GIF file directly onto the website you're using if it's supported. So for example, here is the Giphy.com website. If you go to giphy.com slash upload, you can create an account if you want and it'll store all your GIFs. And then you can simply drag and drop your GIF and then click upload to Giphy. And then there's our animated GIF. You can go to copy link and it'll give you a few different options. If you're working with HTML5, this will give you, as it says here, a smaller and faster version of the GIF. Or you can get your embed code and then embed that onto the website or blog post or any other website that will accept the embed code. And you are good to go. All right, so that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified when we upload. And we will see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,